John Chrysostom. He was a pastor of long ago, and he used an illustration about conversion, wanting to explain that conversion to Christ. He said, for example, if there is a statue and you want to clean it, it's really filthy. So you clean it, it's finished, and it's all shiny new. He explained that the rust uh, needed to be gone. And in this illustration, it's like us as Christians. The Holy Spirit uh, sculpts us and changes our hearts. And God the Father accepts us in his presence. God the Father takes us out of the world? No. Why? Because he planned us to be here. It means that we are in this world, but we are not a part of this world. As he prayed, Jesus said, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. God called us. He called us to live a life here, now, as if we were in the kingdom of heaven, the new heaven, the new earth. And what are we to do? We are to live kingdom life. Chrysostom, he said that life in Christ, it's not like we have to be restored all the time like a statue. No, God has already finished the work on us. Chrysostom goes on that Paul says in the Bible that we should watch out for sin, that it does not cling to us as rust does to a statue. So how do we do that? Well, we keep on cleaning to prevent that from happening, not letting sin creep in on us. We go through a process called sanctification. God has already made us new, finished. And we don't want the rust or the sin to stay creeped up on us and to cover us up. No, because God has already cleaned us, just like new. Now again, we don't want the rust, the sin. We have been cleaned. And what we need to do is keep getting rid of sin. How do we do that? The answer is, Turn away from sin. There's a list in Colossians 3, verses 5 through 8. Now, this is not an exhaustive list, no. It does have five sins that we struggle with. One is sexual sin. We're not talking about normal marital sex. We're talking about sin that is common to Gentiles, non-believers. Up in the first century A.D., most sexual sins are temptation. It's hard to resist those, same as today. Why does Paul bring up the subject of sexual sin again and again and again in his writings in the Bible? Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. People struggle with sexual sin. Yet as Christians, we don't need to feel overwhelmed trying to resist it. No. Paul tells us that the Holy Spirit will help us to resist the temptation of sexual sin, can kill sin. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, obscene talk from your mouth. Sin. There's a list of these that we talked about. Wow, it's powerful. It impacts whole communities negatively, of course. Wrath. Gossip, slander, negative talk. We need to stop it. We must. Put it aside. Now, when people get angry, is that always wrong? No, not always. God himself, who is righteous, he became angry. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart had turned away from the Lord, the God of Israel, who had appeared to him twice. It's hard for us. With anger, we sin. 
We need to be careful that we have the right motive behind our heart when we are angry and not let our anger be falsely kindled. A pastor once said that we should never confuse being a moral person, never confuse that with being a Christian. But we also can't claim to be a Christian if we ignore morality. A person shows moral life. You know, they are a good person, do good things, and that means they're a Christian. They follow Christ, right? Well, not always. A person can be moral, have a moral life, but still there's no evidence of sorrow for sin as an example. Their heart is not changed. It's important that we have the Holy Spirit to empower us to live and honor God, thanking Him for salvation.